Okay, before we get started on the actual study, I have to do my disclaimer and I have to do my bias. I was actually one of the authors on the paper. I was involved in the study. I carried out the study as well. So obviously, yes, this does come with some bias. Am I super excited about aerosol isofactant? You betcha. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families. Bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen this before, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU doc. Today, we're gonna to be discussing minimally invasive surfactant therapy or administration. We're gonna be talking about different methods, like the Ensure method, the LISA method, the LIST method, the MIST method, and then a new, fairly new method called the SALSA method, which is given surfactant through a laryngeal mask airway or an LMA. And make sure you stick to the end because a new study came out talking about aerosolized surfactant. That's right, nebulized or aerosolized surfactant. Make sure you stick to the end because I'm gonna look at that study in a little bit more detail and figure out, is this the future of surfactant administration? Let's get to today's video. All right, so if you're watching this video, you probably know what surfactant is. But let's do a quick recap. Surfactant is a bubbly substance or a soapy substance. And what it does is that essentially decreases surface tension in the alveolus or the air sac. What is surface tension? If you have a liquid between two layers, that liquid would actually wanna to come together. The closer you are in the two layers, the more tension there is to try and bring those layers together. So surfactant decreases that surface tension. It decreases the forces of the two layers of essentially really the liquid layers trying to come together. So as the alveolus is closing off the air, you basically breathe out the air and the alveolus or air sac is trying to close instead of completely collapsing, which wouldn't be good for anybody because you're not able to breathe, you're not able to get oxygen, and then it makes it harder for you to try and open that, that alveolus. When it's trying to collapse, it'll, you'll feel a force because the surfactant sort of repel and keep that alveolus open instead of completely collapsing until your next breath where you can now open up your alveolus because you take a nice deep breath. So that's what surfactant does. It decreases the surface tension and forces of the two layers trying to come together within the alveolus so you don't completely collapse. Son, what do you call a fish with no eye? I don't know, Dad. What do you call a fish with no eye? Premature infants are notorious for having low levels of surfactant. So this is what happens with preemies. The airways sometimes will want to collapse if there's not enough surfactant. So we have to give, and luckily we can give, surfactant in through the trachea or the breathing pipe straight into the alveoli or again the air sacs of the lung to try and keep those areas that would want to collapse from collapsing and therefore they're able to get good oxygen into the bloodstream into the organs that, that the baby needs and also next breath it's not as hard to try and get those air sacs to open because they haven't really collapsed they stayed open so that's what surfactant does All right, everybody got it? Surfactant, good for the lungs. All right, let's talk about Insure. So Insure stands for intubate, surfactant, and extubate. And it's not a study necessarily, it just became an idea because we know that the longer you have an endotracheal tube in the trachea and on mechanical ventilation, the worse it is for the lungs and the higher the risk of developing bronchopulmonary dysplasia or BPD. So, the idea arose to figure out a way in which we can give surfactant 
but not keep the tube in place and not put a baby on mechanical ventilation. Hence, ensure. You intubate, you give surfactant, and then you extubate. Now, there isn't a specific way of doing this, and to be clear, you are still intubating. You are still needing the skills of visualizing the vocal cords, of putting a plastic tube in through the vocal cords, given that liquid surfactant, and then depends on how you do it. Some people immediately take the breathing tube out. Some people wait a certain amount of time, could be as much as an hour, just to see if the baby's tolerating the surfactant well and whether you need to keep the tube because the lungs are sick or whether just giving the surfactant was good enough to allow, as we talked about, the alveoli to open and for the baby to breathe and get good oxygen levels. So that's the idea behind Ensure. What does the data say? So since the idea of Ensure has been around now for many years, there's been smaller studies and even meta-analysis, again, meaning a compilation of studies showing that it actually does decrease bronchopulmonary dysplasia, BPD, chronic lung disease. It also decreases mortality, which again, all of this is really important when you compare it with mechanical ventilation, with the fact that you put a breathing tube in, you stay with the breathing tube for longer than, again, this short period that you would with Ensure. So, it sounds great, very beneficial. We decrease the risk of chronic lung disease. When looking at other outcomes like pneumothorax, like severe IVH or intraventricular hemorrhage bleeding into the brain, it didn't really show a difference. But again, overall, mortality decreases, hey, that's always a good thing. However, keep in mind, there was a recent study, for example, by De Bishop et al. in 2020 that actually showed that unfortunately, Insure was only 33% effective. So this leads obviously all scientists and physicians to try and figure out, is there another way to give surfactant without having to put a large plastic tube down the trachea? This is where thin catheter administration or LISA, MIST, and LIST comes into play. Let's talk about that right now. So thin catheter administration or TSA is sort of the umbrella term for using the Insure method. Again, you still have to put a metal blade or a plastic blade, whatever it is you're using, to open up, look at the airway, visualize the vocal cords. But now with the thin catheter part of the administration, you're using a smaller bore, a smaller radius, a, you know, maybe gentler, softer plastic. And that is where the LISA, the LIST, and the MIST methods come in. When using a thinner catheter, you can use something like an angiocath, similar to an IV. You can use a feeding tube, just like an NG or an OG, a nasogastric tube or an orogastric tube that you would normally put, nose, mouth, goes into the belly. Well, you can go ahead and cut that to a certain size and you use that to be able to feed the surfactant, the liquid surfactant, through into the trachea. So what does LISA, what does LIST, and what does MIST stand for? LISA stands for Least Invasive Surfactant Administration. The LIST is Least Invasive Surfactant Therapy. And the MIST is Minimally Invasive Surfactant Therapy. So why would this method be different? The idea behind the thin catheter administration methods is that you're now minimizing the trauma that you can get from using, again, a thicker, maybe harder plastic tube as an endotracheal tube that you do. Even when you do the Ensure method, you're still putting that same tube that you would if you put on mechanical ventilation. You're still having to insert that tube. So the idea behind is that using something thinner, softer, uh, like a noodle, if you will, is less traumatic. Now, what's really important is recognizing that Similar to the Insure method, you still need the expertise and the skills. Both Insure and the TSA methods still require somebody skilled enough to be able to, you know, use the blade, open the mouth, visualize the vocal cords, 
And then, in, depending on the method that you use, for example, ELISA may actually have to use a McGill or a tool to be able to insert that whatever, you know, feeding tube, NG, OG that you use, you still have to be able to visualize the chords. There are other folks that actually don't use a McGill or a tool that you can actually use the finger and sort of curve it into the trachea. But again, still, this is kind of done a little blindly. You still need the expertise of a, of a blade to be able to get this done appropriately. Is there less trauma? Is this something that is effective? Can it be used? Is this better than Ensure? Let's talk about that right now. So there was a wonderful systematic review and meta-analysis done by Rigo et al. in 2016. The systematic review is essentially putting a lot of different studies together and looking at the overall outcome and getting a conclusion from that. A meta-analysis is actually using the numbers from these smaller studies, putting it together, reanalyzing, and then coming out with a statistical conclusion from that. And what this study showed was that there is a decreased risk of bronchopulmonary dysplasia and death when used in the LIST or LISA method when compared to the INSURE method. Uh, it also showed that there was a decreased risk of needing mechanical ventilation, again, in the LISA LIST method when compared to the INSURE method, with a number needed to treat of eight. What is that? Basically, you need to treat eight babies with the LIST or LISA method for you to see one baby with a decreased risk of mechanical ventilation. And that number is actually fairly low. That's a good number. So again, it did show that this was very good. The question is, you still need an expert to be able to do this. You still need to be taught how to do the LISA method. You still need to be taught how to do the LIST method. And there's not necessarily a decrease in the possible events that you see with complications of needing an intubation, which is the bradycardia, your heart rate dropping, oxygen dropping as well, and also you can have the changes in blood pressure which can affect the brain. And so, like we saw with Insure, there was no changes or difference in intraventricular hemorrhage. The MIST method, again, is very similar to the LISA, to the LIST, you're using a thin catheter, usually an, usually an angiocaf or like an IV type uh, catheter. We do know that the MIST method is effective because there are studies showing that you actually do see a decrease in the need of your CPAP pressure, as well as how much oxygen you need to give a baby after you give surfactant through the MIST method. So obviously it's working, it's getting to the lungs and you know, it's supposed to be doing that. So MIST, like LISA, LIST, does show that it is effective but again, brings us back to the fact that you do need still an expert to be able to introduce, see the cords and introduce that thin catheter through the vocal cords into the trachea. Son, you know which animal you never want to play with? Tell me dad, which animal should I not play with? A cheetah. <laughs> So we've already talked about two ways of giving surfactant. The insure method, still needing in the tracheal tube, the TCA methods, your LISA, your LIST, your MIST, where you're using a small catheter, or a thinner tube, a softer tube, you still have to insert that into the trachea. Well, what about giving surfactant through a method that doesn't actually require anything into the trachea, just the liquid surfactant going through it? That's the idea behind salsa. And SALSA stands for surfactant administration through laryngeal or supraglottic airway. What it is, is given surfactant through a laryngeal mask airway or an LMA. So Dr. Scott Guthrie, Kerry Roberts, and myself came up with the term SALSA. We came up with the idea because there had actually been smaller studies. Dr. Kerry Roberts actually has the largest randomized trial. But there had been all these smaller studies and the way they described everything and how you did surfactant through the LMA was a little bit different. So we wanted to encompass a term that basically signified giving surfactant above the glottis, hence the supraglottic airway, into the larynx, hence the laryngeal part of what the term salsa describes. So this was a way that basically any smaller study describing this type of method could be all put together into the term salsa. If you're familiar with LMAs or laryngeal mask airways, 
It has been used in the emergency rooms, it's been used in the operating rooms. We don't really use it much in the NICU unless there's some emergency and you're unable to insert an endotracheal tube or you have some defect that you have to bypass and you can use a laryngeal mask airway. But essentially, there was some thought that you could actually give surfactant through the laryngeal mask airway because the mouth or the exit of the laryngeal mask airway sits really nice right outside the entrance of the trachea. Therefore, why not give liquid surfactant through that and you do not have to insert it into the trachea causing damage or causing trauma. So that's where the idea came from. And there has been actually now, like as I mentioned, smaller studies and a meta-analysis looking at giving surfactant through the LMA. So the biggest study was done by my good friend, Kerry Roberts. And essentially it is 50 babies on each arm, a control arm and then the LMA arm or the salsa arm. And what it showed was actually a decrease in the need for mechanical ventilation by 38% and also a decrease in the need for intubation by 64%. So pretty effective. Again, it's a small study. But a meta-analysis done in 2018 actually did show that it was effective when compared to ensure and just CPAP alone. The method of doing salsa really did instill the surfactant enough that it could actually improve these outcomes when compared to the two other methods we already talked about. So the salsa method is actually also pretty easy to insert. In Kerry Roberts' study, only 8% were unsuccessful with the first attempt, as compared to the insure, for example, where there was 20% first attempt failure rate. For those interested in the actual steps of doing the salsa method or technique, go ahead and click right up here in the top of the video and you'll be able to actually see step by step the procedure or the method of doing surfactant through the LMA. Keep in mind now, this is not standard practice. And even though we've done smaller studies and there is now a meta-analysis showing that it seems to be safe and effective, we haven't really done a big, huge, blinded, randomized trial to be able to say this for sure absolutely works and is very safe. So again, you do not want to go ahead and just immediately start using uh, this in most situations. There are certain situations where this can be done, and especially there may be some situation in other countries or in developing regions or in communities where this may move in the near future to be used because one of the great, great advantages of doing the salsa method is that you don't need an expert, really. It's actually fairly easy to do this method. And therefore, I believe that in the near future, this may be a method that we'll be using. But again, I don't want everybody to go immediately go out there and start using this because it hasn't really been approved in any way, okay? So that's the, that's the caveat there. Be careful, that's the disclaimer. So salsa actually gives us a minimally, minimally invasive, if you will. You're not inserting anything into the trachea. And of course, yes, there is some of the downside is that some of the surfactant can actually go into the stomach. But in most studies, it's really shown to be negligible. And most of the surfactant will get into the lungs because you can see clinically an improvement in the babies after you've done the salsa method. It's also actually fairly safe. There's no big major adverse event or any safety issues that have been reported. But again, keep in mind, these are small studies. And again, I do mention we need to do the big, big studies for us to be able to for sure say this is absolutely effective and safe to use and change our standard practice. Now, all the methods I talked about have been minimally invasive, including salsa, which I would call minimally, minimally, uh, less minimally, a little bit less than minimally. I don't know. You guys can come up with a better term. Leave them in the comments if you come up with a really cool term to be less than minimally invasive. But let's talk about a method that may be really non-invasive, aerosolized surfactant. You guys have stuck around all this time. So let's get to talking about the study that came out on aerosolized surfactant. Okay, before we get started on the actual study, I have to do my disclaimer and I have to do my bias. I was actually one of the authors on the paper. I was involved in the study. I carried out the study as well. So obviously, yes, this does come with some bias. Am I super excited about aerosolized surfactant? Shoo betcha. 
So what is aerosolized or nebulized surfactant? Essentially, this is a surfactant that's been created in the form of a spray where you can inhale it like an inhaler essentially and get it into your lungs in very, very small particles so it goes really deep as best as it can to the alveoli. This is done through a Solaris device and they do this with a pacifier. How simple is that? Basically, the baby is sucking on a pacifier, has no idea that it's actually getting medications. I wish I could get medications like that all the time where I'm not realizing I'm getting something. They're sucking on a pacifier, they're getting their aerosolized surfactant into the lungs, and then you take the pasty out, and that's it. That's the way that they get their surfactant. They had no idea that they were even getting this. Uh, hypothetically, I, we didn't actually uh, do a survey or ask any of the babies. So this is a nice big study of 454 babies that were randomized to two cohorts essentially. And what it was is using a Solaris device. This was created by Oni Biotech, the same company that uh, creates InfoSurf. So cofactant was used as a surfactant to be able to instill this through the Solaris device. Why calfactant? Well, this is the one surfactant that is actually not minced or chopped. This actually lavaged. And they had actually tried using other surfactants, but the actual meat parts, if you will, were getting and obstructing some of the exits of the pores that would allow you to aerosolize surfactant. Now, as opposed to InfoSurf, which is just straight up liquid, it doesn't have any particles, and therefore is able to freely flow and cause the nebulization of surfactant. That's why calfactant was used. So this study was really neat because it was 457 infants in 22 different NICUs. It was randomized non-blinded because you couldn't really blind to the fact that a baby was getting this type of device. The baby's gestational age ranged from 23 weeks to 41 weeks. The sort of average gestational age was 33 weeks. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the results that it's really important to understand the effectiveness in a certain gestational uh, range. This type of aerosolized surfactant may not be used in all, absolutely all babies. I believe there is a range of babies where this is extremely good and effective, and then other babies that may require still intubation or may require other methods. So out of the 457 infants, 230 were in the aerosolized group, 225 actually received the aerosolization. And the results actually showed that in the aerosolized group, only 26% of these babies required intubation as compared to the control group where 50% were intubated. When looking at the outcomes at 28 days, there were really no difference in respiratory outcomes between two groups. So what was the result and the conclusion from this study? It was essentially that aerosolized surfactant seemed to be very safe. There wasn't really an increase in, in, in adverse outcomes. And it showed that it was effective in that half of the babies required the need for intubation after getting the nebulized surfactant. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the actual pediatrics journal article. Uh, if you hit that, it'll take you to the journal article. Obviously, if you don't have access to look at that article, you can read the abstract. And we also created a video abstract for you to be able to see. At least it gives you some of the information I already gave you, but it, there's some visuals too for you to be able to see what the device is like and a baby actually getting the surfactant. All right, that's it. With that, we conclude today's video. So again, I wanted to sort of bring up the idea of minimally invasive surfactant therapy with the newest method, which is aerosolized surfactant. It had been studied before uh, by Dr. Sood et al. in 2019. This new study just came out October 15th. It's a new method. So I wanted to really bring this to light. I appreciate you guys staying all the way to the end. I am a researcher and specifically in this topic of respiratory care and minimally invasive surfactant. If you guys have questions, please add it to the comment section. Again, watch the video on salsa if you're interested. I'd be happy to have a nice discussion in the comment section should you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like this, go ahead and click that, you know, thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already on my channel. There's a lot of cool videos for medicine and also for trainees and for parents. So thank you so much for watching. This is the Nikki Duck signing out.